sorry. <laughs> James Brennan. <laughs> So when Pam asked me to say a few words, I wondered, well, what exactly could I possibly say? I can't tell you all about Margie's life because I don't know all about Margie's life. <laughs> I met Margie first in the late 70s, so there's a whole section of it that I was not privy to except the stories she would tell me which, in a funny kind of a way, seem more genuinely biographical than if I had gone through the entire time beside her. Um, so we all know, because Marcia told me, that she was fairly wild and rebellious at the beginning of her life. She once told me that for a good time, during her teens, she and the girls would hang out and smoke and sometimes borrow a car <laughs> and go joyriding in downtown Detroit. <laughs> and when I say teens, I mean 13 and 14 because at 15, she ran away to New York City. And so, um, armed with all of her dance training and a lot of gumption, she assaulted New York and rather quickly joined the Ballet Russe, as we all are aware, and always talked with great reverence and awe about the principles in the Ballet Russe. I'm certain that that was also seasoned with those people's personal quirks, but she had a great admiration for that entire experience and learned a lot. She also had all kinds of touring stories to go with the Ballet Roots chapters. Um, I remember once she told us how much fun they all had when they were touring through the South, sneaking one of the black members of the ensemble into a hotel for whites only, and how they had to constantly uh, maneuver to carry it off continuously through their whole stay in that particular city. So she had one adventure after another. Then she was back in New York and was uh, making forays into the theater because she had such strong dance training and was such an amazing dancer that she caught choreographers' eyes. Um, and I remember once she told me that her ballet got her in the door and her instinct and perhaps talent, although I'm sure she didn't use that word, um, allowed her to quickly pick up the styles that choreographers were throwing at her that were jazzier, more Broadway style dancing. And so she shot to the top of that eventually now, working with, of course, John Robbins and Bob Fosse. But we all know how she felt about Bob Fosse. <laughs> um, and uh, so she began the chapter in her life having reinvented herself as a Broadway dancer, uh, where she was in New York and occasionally working in TV back in the days when TV variety shows were happening in New York, and, uh, and also industrials in the heyday of the industrial world. Uh, and so there she was. Once again, she reinvented herself as a wife and then a mother, and then a divorcee. Mm -hmm. And she was in a position where she was a single mother and feeling all that that entails and needing to pay the rent. So she found a few people from the industrial world and began working directing industrials. 
and of course choreographical. And that's where I come in. Uh, I was sent to my first industrial audition. It was at Broadway Arts, remember Broadway Arts. <laughs> <laughs> I walked by Broadway Arts, the, the Broadway Arts corner, 56th and Broadway the other day, and I was with somebody and I said, right up here on the seventh floor is where I first met Marjorie Beto. It was in the corner room at Broadway Arts. And I, I had gotten there, Edie had wished me luck, you know, it was. and I was sitting waiting. Uh, the door of the room opened, and there was Marjorie in the door. She said, into the hallway, James Bannon? And I said, yes. She said, you're next. I went in, I handed my music to the accompanist, I turned around, and Marjorie was sitting at the table. I said, oh my god, I'm auditioning for the hall monitor. <laughs> I sang my song. She said, that was wonderful. Now let me see if you can dance. I said, okay. She gave me two steps that I'd never seen before. They were not particularly difficult. And she said, let me see them. So I showed them, ready for more. She said, thanks, that's it, that's terrific. I said, that's it? She said, yeah. I said, that's the shortest dance audition I've ever been through in my entire life. She looked me square in the eyes and said, that's all I need, I can tell. <laughs> and she said, I know, I really can. I've seen all I need to know. And that's how I joined what we like to refer to as the Marjorie Beto Industrial Stock Company. <laughs> There was Jimmy Tushar, and Barbara Human, Randy Easterbrook, Joyce Nolan, Valerie Lee, and me. Occasionally augmented when the budget of allowed by, by wonderful other people. Um, but we were the six that most of the time worked together. And we toured the country. We went to all major cities. We went to Hawaii once. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are occasionally these bonus jobs in the industrial world. You know, Cleveland, not such a bonus. <laughs> Scottsdale, Arizona, a little bit hot, a little bit dry. Okay. Hawaii, that, 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 was, the, that was the plum. We went to Hawaii. We were all one morning sitting around the breakfast table in the restaurant downstairs, waiting to have breakfast and to go then to rehearsal for the day. And Margie came down, wa wended her way through the tables, <clears throat> threw her purse on the chair, lit up a cigarette, plopped in the chair, and said, well, another fucking day in paradise. <laughs> For which she became famous in our little circle. It's absolutely true. Um, another plum job we had was, oh, this is a great example. We went to Greece. We went to Monte Carlo and Greece. It was a double header. In Greece, uh, I, uh, my wife Catherine uh, was along uh, on that. And one day, uh, Margie came to us and said, oh, let's, the three of us go out today. I heard about these wonderful restaurants in Piraeus. Now Piraeus, for those of you who don't know, oh, look, there's nodding all over the audience. Piraeus is this little village that's on the ocean, about, oh, I don't even know how many miles outside of town. Uh, so we got in the cab, it was about a 20 minute cab ride, maybe, maybe 25. We got to Piraeus, beautiful, picturesque. The harbor is there with all the boats, some of them sailing boats, some of them fishing boats. There's this curved little street right along the water and a row of really quaint restaurants, all of which have been recommended.